Yes, lads, what's happening? And welcome to the 33rd episode of the Little Running Irish Run podcast. This Thursday's episode, once again, like last week's with Leo Dashbot, was an absolute banger. It is an absolute banger. We are joined by the one, the only, another American high school legend, a, a YouTube sen- not s- sensation, I'm going to say it, a sensation, and just an all around really, really nice guy. Easton Arid. I'm sure a lot of you out there that do running, watch running on YouTube, or know even a little bit about running would have heard the name at least once. Easton Arid, he's big, big goals for the future. He's top five All American for cross country, uh, cross country boys. He's he's an incredible YouTube channel. He also took part in the Quarantine Classico with Leo Dashba. So we talk about that as well. We talk about his insane cross-country career, track career, his obviously the Quarantine Classico, life in general, and injuries. We talk about a lot, a lot of things. Um, No, it's just an incredible episode. I really can't wait for you guys to hear this one, to listen to it or watch it wherever you are listening or watching this episode. It's a banging episode. I know I say that all the time, but this one holds a bit of a special place to my heart because I've been watching Easton on YouTube for a while now and I never thought I'd get the chance to actually interview him on a podcast. So, yeah, I just appreciate everyone that subscribes or uh, listens to the podcast week in, week out. It just gives me great opportunities like this to talk about, to talk to I'm just gonna say I talk to one of my idols because he's my idol in a running sense uh, because of how good he is uh, as a runner he's my idol in a YouTube and content creating sense because uh, even shows as a running um, content creator you can get pretty big on any platform so yeah great opportunity for me to talk and interview um Easton I read is an excellent excellent episode can't wait for you guys to listen to it or watch it Easton Thanks so much for coming on. It was a great episode. Eason is just such a great athlete and such a great guy all around. So yeah, this is a great episode. Can't wait for you guys to listen to it. And yeah, enough of me blabbing on. Uh, blabbing on, is that even a word? But enough of me just talking absolute waffle. And let's get into this banging, banging episode of the podcast. All right, so we're joined here by the high school legend once again, Eason Alred. How are you today, Eason? I'm doing great. Just happy to be on the podcast. Yeah, no, I'm really happy to have you on. Just like Leo last week, I was a bit amazed when you actually replied to my replied to my text, just to chance in my arm really to see if I could get you on. And here you are. So I, I thank you for coming on. Hey, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. And uh, before we get into the questions, you turned the big one eight there the other day. Would that be correct in saying it was eighteen? Um, I turned nineteen actually. Nineteen. I'm a man. <laughs> so you're you're growing up. So happy happy late birthday uh, to you. Uh, thank you. And uh, this this episode was a bit delayed because you were you've been sick. So do you want to? Uh, this isn't actually down in my questions, but just for something to start off with. Uh, how have you been coping with it? And like, how was? Uh, have you been training much, or how have you been dealing with the illness? Um. Yeah. So I. I have like a weird sickness where it's not just like a one-time thing. I've been basically yeah. sick for two years, so um, I'm I'm pretty good at coping with it. Usually, when I yeah. run, I actually feel like a little bit better. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. But um, basically, anytime I'm not running, I'll just oftentimes just like feel sick during the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's something that I've learned to manage, and I've gotten better at it. I just usually kind of sit down and stare at a wall for a couple hours while it goes away or or maybe I, I have a girlfriend so she'll come over and hang out with me or some of my buddies will come over and we'll play yeah. video games but um yeah so I'm I've uh, been going to the doctor I had like three different three different blood work tests yesterday and uh, I think we're about to figure it out soon so yeah no, that's that's really good we don't want a talent like you um getting sick we need your full fitness to uh to be ripping up the track anyway so hopefully you can uh, obviously you said you've been having it for two years now so you've found ways to to cope with it like you said but hopefully you can get you back to 100 percent as soon as possible and then um, you know I'm, I'm really excited to have you on you know it's it, uh, i said this in the episode with leo but i'm kind of fanboying here a little bit because uh, i've been watching your your videos for quite a while now and when when researching uh, you up just a little bit more because as i said i've watched your videos and and um, i know a, a little bit about you just from your channel but will i be correct in saying you're ranked five uh, for a high school boys cross country in america or would you know anything about that 
You're ranked um, fifth. Yeah. So people always ask me like what my ranking is, um, and I would say it changes. I was ranked fifth, la- or my my junior year I was ranked fifth in the nation because that's what I finished. Yeah. And then I uh, I got injured before my senior year, so I ended up getting fortieth or something. I I was I ran the race injured, but um, when I'm healthy, I'm usually ranked uh, somewhere in the top five. I would say. That, that's insane and like over in Ireland we've the, the same as you for cross country you'd have uh, all Ireland so nationals basically but it's nowhere near the size of America so it's pretty much like an extra big achievement being top five in America that's that's absolutely insane oh well, thank you I appreciate it um yeah well I I know a, a little bit very uh, hopefully that doesn't sound too creepy from from watching your YouTube videos and I'm sure uh, a lot of people listening to this podcast know you as um, obviously people that listen to this would be in with running or watch running or whatever but for the people that might not know you as well would you want to give maybe a little bit of a background about yourself your normal life running career just anything like anything that you think you sh- you need to share just a bit of background about yourself um, yeah, so I kind of started it out like you did. I had a podcast and I started it when I was 14, I believe. And I just, I would interview people that inspired me. And then I ended up writing a book about all those things. And then yeah. that kind of led the way into doing a YouTube channel and also helped me to learn the things that helped me to be the runner that I am today. So yeah. um, I like to think that I'm a pretty good runner. And then I also do YouTube and I have a book out and, um, like and I and I've been learning a lot about life and about myself over the past two years as I've kind of like had this sickness and so yeah uh, that's just like one thing that I'm not really sure how it's going to impact my life long term but I'm hoping that I can write another book about how I've dealt with that in the future or something along those lines but in my free time I like to wakeboard like to wake surf like to travel and adventure um, I've been to I've been like all around the world and I love doing it and um, I love working on videos, just anything that I can be growing and learning and having fun, I'm all for. That That's so cool and it's so refreshing hearing someone of your talent even like having uh, having a sickness and someone of your talent being able to cope with that and overcome it and achieve the things that you've achieved. It's just so refreshing to hear that if you put your mind to anything, you can, you can accomplish it. Hey, you know, there's something I do need to bring up. I think I saw in one of your YouTube videos that you're a Liverpool fan, and I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I have uh, I have my Skype uh, here softened in the background, but behind me here, I've loads and loads of Liverpool posters in the background here. I'm a huge fan. Who do you support? Hey, I think you should keep it blurred back there. <laughs> oh, bars. We're only uh, five minutes in, and the bars are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Spurs fan. Oh, it's my my cousin's a Spurs fan. Uh, okay, they're, they're not Spurs. too bad. Did you? How did you feel last year in the Champions League final? That must be a uh, that must be a bit bittersweet now on talking to a Liverpool supporter. Oh uh, yeah, it's it, that was that was brutal. Liverpool deserved the win, but um, yeah, that was that was pretty. But brutal. the but the two semi finals, Liverpool Barcelona and Spurs Roma, that was that has to go down in Champions League history. That was absolutely insane. Yeah, that was yeah, that was insane. But no, that's it. Uh, that's something actually I didn't know about you that you were a, 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 so- a soccer or what as we call a football fan in the first place, and then you support Spur- you support Spurs. So that's a uh, that's really cool. That's funny. So um, might have to ask you to leave now after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, that's that's really cool. And um, obviously. Someone uh, of your talent. I don't want to keep saying it, but I, I feel like I have to. I can't emphasize it enough. But would be would be training for. I have been training for quite a while now, and I know a lot of people have uh, just natural talent. But when did you start running and taking it really, really seriously to get to the level you are at today? Um, I started running when I was in. I want to say seventh grade, and I would just do like little runs for basketball because. Yeah. I was like, at the time, I was a really, like, a big basketball player. Like, that was my passion. And I didn't have very much natural talent, but I worked really, really hard at basketball. And so I would just go on runs to stay in shape. And I would send my times to my basketball coach. And he would see the times, and he would ask me to redo it because he didn't believe me. And I didn't <laughs> know they were good. And I was like, oh, what the heck? So <laughs> then I started doing uh, middle school track. And I didn't even train, but I would still go win all the races. And so I was like, all right, like, <laughs> Maybe, I, maybe I'm pretty good at that. That's this, crazy. 
people ask me, I don't know if you're going to ask this later on, but I might as well just answer while we're here, but yeah. people ask me all the time about like natural talent and they ask me like how much I think it matters in running. Yeah. And I think that it does, like, there's, it's definitely a factor. Yeah, but, definitely. Like, I, I ran better than other kids in middle school like that. Most people would say, okay, like that's natural talent. But like, also you have to realize that when I was 10 years old, I stopped eating like any amount of sugar. Like I, I haven't had a birthday cake since I was like literally 10. And, really? and now I have, now I have like, I'll snack on like ice cream or whatever. Cause I realize yeah. like, it's not a big deal if I'm um, running so much, but I really did eat incredibly healthy since the time I was 10. And I, always was working hard at something and always being an active kid. And so I think yeah. that is a huge factor along with natural talent. I think that in high school, I, I honestly believe like anybody can be really good in high school. Yeah. I think college natural talent is more of a factor, but in high school, if you work really hard at the sport and you're dedicated and you're sleeping a whole lot, then I think that you can keep up with like the best guys in the state as yeah. long as you're working your best. So. Yeah, no, that's it. I seen this uh, quote one time. It's hard work will beat natural talent if natural talent doesn't work hard. And uh, I think that's so true because there's so many people out there that uh, not like yourself. Obviously, you have the natural talent and the you, and you work hard and you're motivated as well. And that's so great to see. But there's people out there that are that maybe that would have been in your position at a young age, beating everybody and then got on a big head, got on cocky and maybe start thinking that they wouldn't have to work hard. And uh, then the people that maybe don't have as much natural talent are putting in the putting in the work and grinding away. And then they end up uh, like beating them and um, becoming a better athlete and getting further in the sport. So it's definitely, it's definitely a mixture of two. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, for sure. And the other thing that I like found really interesting is I went to the Nike elite camp last year and I got to go with like basically the top 10 guys in the country and the, and the top 10 girls in the country. And I expected it to just be like a big um, pool of natural talent and a lot of prideful kids. Yeah. And that's not what I saw at all. It was like really humble, incredibly hardworking individuals. And that's why they're, they're the best in the country. Like every single one of them is absolutely obsessive about the sport. Like, yeah, like I think a lot of people just expect them to just be incredibly natural talent, like naturally talented. And I'm sure there are people out out there that are like that. But if you're going to be top ten in the country, you have to also be like one of the hardest working. Definitely, yeah. Like definitely. The, the amount of like focus and obsession that those kids have is is unmatched. And I've never run with anybody that had that except for at that camp. So I think yeah. I found that really interesting. And no, you mentioned earlier that um your your podcast and YouTube channel made you the athlete you are today and I feel like now since I've started the podcast each Sunday I talk about my week of training and that motivates me more to get out on a on a run or do the session because I don't want to come on the podcast on a Sunday and be like yeah I didn't run on Monday because I was just feeling lazy and I wasn't bothered do you, did you feel the same when you were maybe for a YouTube channel and you maybe you didn't want to disappoint your subscribers uh, like not doing well in the race and not going out for a session did you feel like that gave you that extra bit of motivation um yeah i do i feel like it does give me an extra bit of motivation but i you know i try not to let it i try for it to be a thing that's between um myself and and how good i want to be like yeah. i don't i don't ever want my running to be um pressured by by youtube and i can see how that could be a motivator but i would just my advice would be to be careful with it because over time it adds pressure and you don't necessarily want added pressure like yeah Find, find ways to keep yourself motivated to keep running but i think it's important to realize like if you have a bad race like you you don't you don't want to feel like you're like letting your people down yeah exactly you just want to feel good about like the effort you're giving out and if it's not what your subscribers were expecting then it doesn't matter yeah so, exactly i think i think there's definitely a balance there yeah, a hundred percent. It definitely is. Like, if you're, uh, I'm not saying like for me because I'm only still small, but especially for you, if your subscribers aren't subscribing to you because because you're not winning races, and if they're subscribing for you just because of the work you put in, then you don't want the people there that are just there because you're such a good athlete. You want the people there that are with you on the highs and the lows, and uh, th to give you confidence in any situation. Totally. Yeah. No. That that's definitely how I see it. I think. That YouTube, 
um, like as a creator, you can definitely take it the wrong way because with our modern society, with how much of a factor like depression and anxiety are, yeah. and just with all the social stigmas and, and everything out there, like it's important to um, just be in the moment and be focusing on what matters to you and not worrying too much about what the world thinks of you. Yeah, no, that's exactly if you you're not gonna you're not gonna impress everyone, you're not gonna be friends, everyone. Just do what you want to do and the people that stick with you are the real ones basically. Totally, I agree. And uh, yeah, obviously people that are listening or watching this episode podcast want to hear about about the big stuff, you know, obviously there is your background and there's your, your YouTube and podcast, but we want to jump into the real juicy stuff now. So uh, I just want to, yeah, jump in straight into your running career. So the first, uh, the first race I want to talk about is the Colorado uh, Junior Olympics. So how was, how was that just as an experience uh, as a whole? Um, it was awesome. So that was like one of my first races ever yeah. and I didn't really know what to expect. And I thought that, uh, with the competition in there that I had a chance of winning, but I didn't think I would. And then I, I, I believe that I went out and won by like 30 seconds or something crazy. And so like that just gave me like so much confidence yeah. in my next couple of races and just like made me feel like. I could be a legit runner and it motivated me to work really hard and, and become passionate about the sport. And how did you actually get into the Colorado, Colorado Junior Olympics? Is it is it just what the the name of it? Like, I'm not too sure, like, the Junior Olympics, is that just what they called it? Or how did you actually get into it? Um, yeah, so it's it's it sounds really big. I wouldn't say it's as big as, like, most of the races I've done. Um, if anything, it's, like, a smaller race. But it, I just knew the... I knew the head Colorado director for the Junior Olympics, and so she got me into the race. Um, and it was, it wasn't huge, but it was just like a really cool, fun environment. Yeah. And I didn't even, I didn't even go to like the national meets because I just, I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to do at that point. Yeah, and uh, what what event did you run there? Because you said you you won by thirty seconds. So just for people listening at home, what event did you actually run at the the Junior Olympics? Um, so I ran the 5K. Oh, okay, and uh, yeah. what insane time! I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it out there. Even before you mentioned the time, what time did you run? Uh, um, I, I it, that's hard. I can't exactly remember just because it was so long ago. But yeah. I think that I ran like 16:07 or 16:04. Jesus! And how old were you then? I think that I was. Let's see, if I'm 19 now. It was about five years ago, so I was probably about 14, 15. That is, that is pulling me to shame. I've had so many guests on, right? And obviously you and Leo are top athletes worldwide now at the moment, but even like athletes inside Ireland that I'd be racing at, not all of them have put me to shame with, with the <laughs> PB. So that's giving me a bit extra motivation to get out and work a bit harder, but no, that's an absolutely <laughs> insane time. Uh, well, for the age, you. obviously you've uh, you've you've come a long way since then, and we'll talk about that now in a little bit more. But for for your age back then, that is that is crazy. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, also, I, I want to talk about the the cross southwest uh, nationals race. So, uh, yeah, so basically the same really as the junior Olympics. How was because obviously Nike cross is a lot of people like a lot of people like worldwide know about the event but it's really really big over in america so nike cross nationals what is that like as an experience obviously you arrived there a few days before the race and there's a lot of other events that go on and um, like over the course of the over the course of your time there so what is that like as as an experience we'll get into the race uh, now in a minute but just like before the race the atmosphere and the village and uh, all the events before i'm just interested in how that is um, yeah, it's, it's pretty absurd. The, the cool thing about that is it's not just a race, like yeah. it's a total experience and, uh, you get there and everybody is honestly, like, it depends on the year. Like I've been three separate years and, um, it's, it's different every time just based off of like who's there. But, um, especially like my freshman year and a little bit the other two years as well, like you get to the race and everybody is focused. Like, yeah, like nobody, no, like, no, like very few people are like really trying to socialize and like get to know people. Mm. But, um, but it's just, 
an environment where everybody's kind of like eyeing the competition. You're like looking around and like yeah. you see all these people that you've only seen on articles and like they're famous and it's it's pretty cool. And then uh, you go to like the Nike Athletes Lounge and there's professional athletes there that you look up to and there's sofas and video games and ping pong and it's like they treat you like a professional athlete for a couple yeah. days and it's really really cool and you just feel like valued and you feel fast and accomplished and then you get to the race and it's like the most tense thing you've ever seen but it's also a beautiful course yeah and then kind of afterwards after the race everybody is like all happy and excited yeah. and ready to get to know each other all of a sudden and yeah. they're not asking each other anymore and it's just like a really fun environment after the race but um I, as time has gone on and especially like this year like i've been since i've been at nike cross nationals three years in a row i i feel like i kind of got to be one of the trendsetters to like yeah kind of push things to be like what they are and and me and some of the other guys in the class like cole sprout and connor olsen and and some of the other guys we I feel like I've created an environment where everybody is actually like trying to get to know each other now. Yeah, and so, so cool. And yeah, it's so, like when you go to those races, like everybody is starting to be like more and more friendly and, and it's becoming like a community thing where it's just like you go there, you get inspired by everybody there and you get to race fast. So it's a really, really cool experience. That That's so cool. Like from your first year there, um, as you said, it was probably – tense and everyone has said oh you know beat each other and now you've made it a bit of a more welcoming place it's kind of like in school when when you come in like you join a new school you're real tense and nervous and that's probably like what it is now when new people for the first year come to night cross but you've made it a real like home your place and a, a nicer environment altogether before the race so that is that is really cool yeah, definitely. And I don't know if it's like that for the younger guys, but I at least know for, like, my class, like, the class of 2020, like, we've all gotten to know each other well enough that, like, we go to those races and, like, we're all excited to see each other. Yeah. And, like, it's, like, a really fun environment for sure. And just to have everything, like, decked out in Nike and to get free gear is also <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's that would probably be – obviously, doing well in the race is the main goal, but that on the side is probably everyone's – one of everyone's favorite parts. Definitely, for so sure. So you said you've been there three years uh, in a row now. That's an incredible accomplishment. So from your first year uh, and your second year and your third year, what uh, distances did you run? So Nike Cross Nationals, they only run the 5K. So I did okay. that. And which year uh, was your best year out of all of them? Um, yeah, so my, my freshman year, I finished one spot off of All-American. Or not my freshman year, my sophomore year, I finished one spot off All American yeah. and got twenty second. And then my third year, I got or I get yeah my my junior year, I finished fifth, and um, I was really happy with with that because when I finished fifth, it was like that was when I was first getting sick, and yeah. so I'd been sick for like a month and I didn't know what was going on, and I like had to take two weeks off right before the nationals race. So I was in incredible shape. And then I just stopped training because I was so sick. Yeah. But then I was still able to go and get fifth. So I was really, really excited about that. Um, and that was probably my best year because my, my senior year, I was, I was sick and injured. So it wasn't my best race. Yeah. But would you say, um, the, the year that you came, you came fifth was maybe a little bit of a bittersweet situation. Obviously coming fifth is an insane accomplishment, but if you were fully fit on the day and you didn't get sick leading up to it, you, you could have done better. So that is that kind of in the back of your mind or was in the back of your mind on, on race day? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I feel like running is all about bittersweet. Like you set yeah. big goals, you hope you get them, and then you just have to be happy with what you get. And I I do feel like that if, if all the cards went my way, then I could have won. But there's a lot of guys in the race who could probably say that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was. I, I definitely wanted to win, and I was a little bit like I was a little bit bummed, but I was also like, you know what? It is really cool that even with like the trials I went through throughout the season, like I was still able to pull out a top five time in the country. Like that, that that's like a pretty cool accomplishment if I just focus on that and not worry about like what could have been. Exactly. So that's like, kind of the mindset I went for. And then I also like at the time I was also like sick. Like now way more motivation to come back and win it next year. 
yeah that is that's how that's how humble because like so many people could just say like i came fifth like not a lot of people have ever have ever done that or will ever do that but you're you're still so motivated to come back stronger and stronger and do better and better and even even with like things that come in your way you're still so motivated to get through them so it's so it's so humble and it's so motivating for everyone listening that it really shows if you just are consistent and put your mind to it you can be, maybe not be a 15 in night cross nationals but you can you can improve up the ranks in your running career or anything you're doing in life definitely for sure it's all about the mindset yeah that's it exactly like if you if you go into a race and you're like like i bet you went into the race yeah you were sick two weeks before that was in the back of your mind but you probably went in with a positive mindset and that was half the battle done before you even got into the race totally yeah it's i think like when you step on the line like a lot of people determine their race before they even get there like one thing that i try to do is like i try to visualize and think about my race and and talk about talk to myself about winning and visualize winning but when you really get to the line all that you kind of have to forget and let the stress go and just say you know what like i'm grateful to be here and i'm so happy that i like i wouldn't choose to be anywhere else in the world like you could be fearful of like the pain that you're about to like endure as you race or you could be like you know what like i want to race like this is exciting this is fun um, and I get to run for my team, so and, it's and pretty the, cool thing for sure. The, pace is, the, the pain is going to happen no matter what. So even though it might be hard at times to put it to the back of your head and maybe try to forget about it and focus on the, the positives that are going to come out of the race, the pain is always going to happen. So just try not think about it as much. I'm I'm a critic for nerves before a race. So I, uh, I can be really nervous for the race and um, it's not it, as you said it's not as much how I'm going to do in the race because I know maybe I'll qualify with my team have a chance of qualifying individually I know because uh, uh, of the work I put in, put in before the race I know I'm going to do my best and get good result out of the race 99% of the time but it's just the pain especially cross country you just know the pain that's ahead of you yeah totally it's it's a brutal thing thinking about that. And it's just, as you run more often, you just kind of like learn to embrace the pain and yeah. in, in a way, like almost enjoy it. And so I think that's been a really big part of my running career is just enjoying and getting through that pain. And then just like the reward afterwards is huge. Yeah, no, that's it. hundred percent. There's, there's no price you can put on the feeling after finishing a race. Like, the moment you cross the line, no matter what place you come, there's just a, it feels like a weight, a ton of weight being lifted off your shoulder, and that feeling is priceless. That's so true. Yeah, you just feel so good being done. Yeah, it's uh, even like a week leading up to the race, you're thinking about it, you're getting a bit nervous, and then uh, all the preparation and all you've done, as soon as you finish the race, you just feel so much lighter and relaxed. Totally. Obviously, coming fifth in Nike, uh, Nike Cross and uh, the the Junior Olympics and all these great achievements, but is there any other achievements off the top of your head over any part of your running career that you you can think of that you'd like to mention? Um, yeah, I've I've had a couple. Like before I got sick, before I got fifth in the country, I ran a college AK. Yeah, and um, I, I, it was a Division One race. There were some D two teams there as well, and um, I didn't know what to expect. But I actually ended up like winning the race, yes. and um, I was just so stoked about that, just because like I was a high school kid, and I was even a junior. And then I was able to go like win a college race. Like I thought that was pretty cool, and I was like really stoked about that. And then. Um, when I ran 408 my sophomore year uh, in the mile, like that was at the time that was like the fastest, or it was like one of the, it was like I think it was like number one or number two for like the fastest sophomore mile like in the past decade. So I was like really stoked about that. And then uh, I ran 405 a couple weeks ago, and that wasn't as fast as I had wanted to go. Yeah. But I also was just like proud of like the effort that went into that, and just proud of like through like all of the all the injuries and stuff that I've been through, I was able to still pull out like a 405 and it just made me excited for the future and um, um, just really, really excited to run at BYU and get better and drop those times. Yeah, like running, winning an AK, uh, a college AK, uh, that is, that's insane. So what, how old were you uh, when you ran, when you won that race? Uh, I think I was probably 17. 
Gee, that is, that is, that is, like, that, if someone was to do that over here in Ireland, that would be on the news, in the papers, up on every Instagram page, that is, that is incredible, it's running the night, <laughs> Thank winning, you. winning a AK, a college AK at 17 years of age, that is, some people won't even do that in college, in their final years of college, during their prime during college, some people won't even do that, so that is, that is incredible to say the least, but you did mention the, the 405 mile there that you ran in the quarantine classico um so yeah obviously i spoke to leo about that he obviously had an amazing time there so how was that as an experience for you we'll talk about a little bit about the race now in a moment but uh obviously with the pandemic i'm not going to say the c word but just with the pandemic uh, <laughs> uh, preparing for that race did anything did you have to mix up anything in your training or how did you prepare for that race um, yeah, so my my coach would send me the workouts. He wasn't, like, able to directly coach us just because of the rules with um, the Utah High School Athletics Association. But um, he was able to just, like, send us some workouts. And so I just did those. And um, I think the biggest thing for me during the pandemic to stay motivated was to have a couple of teammates that we would all run at, like, a specified time of day. And we'll usually do two days. So every day we'd run at um we'd run at like nine o'clock and then we run again at four o'clock and we yeah. tried really hard to like stay on those schedule or stay on that schedule because it wasn't like a decision it was like okay you wake up you run like it's like that's just how it is yeah so that was really big and then the the experience of the of like being in california with those guys was really really fun like we're all just really good buddies and it was super fun to hang out and to um and to go after something that was uh, just kind of a big deal with everything that's going on and, and nobody was really racing and we had the opportunity to run really fast in a cool location and it just was, it was special to be with those guys and to be working hard at something and to be able to go after it. Yeah, no, exactly. And uh, I know I seen your, uh, you mentioned there that it, no one was really racing and it was just, it was a chill environment, you and all your mates. And I seen that in your vlog, everyone, everyone just seemed like so chilled and relaxed and looking forward to it, not too nervous, just kind of like breaking down the cobwebs a bit after uh, it, maybe a bit of a long period of not racing. But uh I know we mentioned it before and you mentioned that running is a bittersweet sport because no matter how well you do, there's always something that maybe could have gone better and obviously the the quarantine class might not have gone ahead uh, if the pandemic didn't uh, arrive. But if just say you were to do that uh, mile time trial or a, a mile time trial with the with the guys anyway, not even the quarantine class go, just say you were to do one and you were able to train properly with your coach and everything, what time would you say maybe you would have been able to run faster or what time would you be would you be thinking you may have been able to run um that's a good question i think like with a lot of us we like we didn't let the pandemic affect us very much like if yeah. like if we were the type of athletes that under awkward circumstances couldn't train and couldn't function we wouldn't be like the top guys in the country exactly I, I think it's like we all had the discipline to keep working hard and keep training so had we been able to train perfectly without um without any upsets from the pandemic i think it would have i think it still would have been very similar with times yeah. like maybe maybe we, maybe i could have dropped like a second yeah but i think that's probably the most i because i think that we were all able to stay really focused and keep training really hard. I think the bigger factor for me was um, just like injury and getting a slow start back from that standpoint. And then also like the pacing was a little bit weird. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, that's, that's really good to hear. So may, big things to come anyway for you in the mile then. Um, a bit more training as you said when you get into college but staying on the topic maybe of the quarantine class go you said that you were no one was really racing and it was a pretty chill environment leading up to the race but nonetheless leading up to a time trial maybe the nerves might get to you a little bit knowing the pain that's going to be ahead so on the line how are you how are you feeling before it? um that's a good question um so for me especially with this race and and with how the world was functioning at the time 
and like knowing that it was probably my last high school race and it was like my one opportunity like it added a lot of stress just yeah. because like yeah. normally normally in a season you get plenty of chances to prove yourself and in this circumstance it was like all right this is my one chance yeah. and i think that a lot of us felt like that we're like this is our one chance and because of that like it added up so much pressure and we didn't have we we didn't have like the the ability to compare ourselves because not, none of us had like really raced each other in a while. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of the uncertainty made it more like, stressful. And so I think because of that, I just decided that it wasn't worth it to put myself through that. And even like the better strategy would just be to have the mindset of having fun, like not yeah. worrying about the times, like things obviously weren't ideal and just to worry about enjoying the race and like enjoying being able to time trial with my buddies and like that was that was my main focus and so I would say I was happy on the line like I was happy and I was excited and and I think that's the right mindset to go with into a race however I, like my biggest regret from that race is that I was so chill that I I gave up too early and I yeah. think that that's a rare thing for me to do in a race and it's like good for me to know that so I can adjust adjust for the next time exactly but when the pace went through really slow through 800 meters, I think everybody in the race kind of knew that Leo was the only guy that could possibly break four in the mile because the rest of us just aren't we like we're not that quick. Like Leo's really quick, but the rest yeah. of us aren't quick. But um, I think especially for me because I was in the I was started in the back and that was kind of my initial strategy. But when we came through, I think it was like 203. I just was like, oh, like I'm not gonna break four. four. Like, that's what I'm here for. So like I, I might as well like not get my 100. percent Yeah. And so I think I let my that get to my get to my head, and I, uh, I that's my biggest regret from that race. And it's something that's good for me to know for college is just to not give up. If you don't get your time, just keep pushing, and you'll get exactly. something that's, that's good anyway. So I think that with that in my mind, I could or without that mindset, I could have run. A little bit faster yeah no like um well i forgot what i was gonna say no uh, <laughs> what, what i was gonna say was uh what was i gonna say hey this has been happening to me non-stop dude i was driving with my cousin yesterday and i just kept forgetting what i was saying so uh, no, literally, <laughs> literally as soon as you were saying it there um Oh no, it came back to me. I had it in my mind and you know, as soon as you were talking there, I had it in my mind what I was gonna say. But no, what I was gonna say was uh Are you serious? No. <laughs> what I was gonna say was it's any race you go out and do, uh, you always no matter win, lose, uh, good time, bad time, you always come back learning something like you did in the in the quarantine class going. I know before a race and um, obviously you were doing it with your with your mate, so you kind of had an idea. As he said, you knew Leo was you knew Leo was the one that would have broke for the four minutes. And um, when any other race you're on the line, you're looking around, you kind of know who's going to be challenging at the top and uh, who's not going to be challenging at the top. So before the race, what did you expect from yourself? Uh, like what time did you expect to run? Obviously, you ran a very respectable 4:05:57. What did you expect to run, and what did you expect uh, from maybe a few of your uh, teammates around you? Um, yeah, so I I didn't know exactly what to expect, but I knew for myself that it was gonna be it wasn't gonna be slower than four oh five. Like I talked to my buddy on the phone, and I was like, and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna run, but it's not gonna be slower than four oh five. Yeah, and yeah. I I ran four oh five, so maybe I shouldn't have said that, but um, <laughs> but. I, I also think I could have gone faster. And so I, I thought that I was going to be somewhere between I, – I honestly, like with my workouts, I thought there was a very slim chance I was going to break four. Um, I thought it was maybe possible, but I was like – in my head, I was like, all right, I'm running somewhere between 359 and 405. Yeah. Um, and then um, with the rest of the guys, I – I knew their potential because I've raced with Thomas Boyden a little bit recently and I've raced with Cole and I've raced with Leo and I know how fast those guys are. Yeah. So I thought that what was probably going to happen is, is I thought that Leo would break four. Um, I thought that Cole would break four and I thought that, that Thomas would be right there. Um, but at the end of the day, like it just, it didn't go all of our way. 
Yeah. And I'm, I'm so happy that Leo was able to pull it out. And it just was a really impressive feat to do that with that pacing too. Yeah, no, it was it was an incredible race. On the topic of Carl Sprout, he was on the Total Run Productions podcast. I mentioned this in mm-hmm. Leo's episode. And that really, that re- actually, I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't know too much about the, I knew that it was happening, but I didn't know too much about the quarantine class call before I listened to that podcast. I was It was really good uh, and informative episode. And when I was, when I was uh, watching the race, when I went up on Total Running Productions um, YouTube, I, I was kind of keeping my eye on you because I knew you from YouTube and uh, I wanted to see you do well and um, hopefully break four. And I was keeping my eye on Carl Sprout. And then I seen I seen Leo make the move with 250 metres to go. And I was like, hold on a second. Who's, who's this guy coming around into the final 200 metres and finished the race in what, like a, a 3.59.57, somewhere around there. That is, and I was like, oh my god like i i'm not even gonna lie didn't know leo well i knew a little bit about him uh obviously through instagram and races he's ran a videos have come up but i didn't know too much about him before the race so i definitely learned a lot about uh, everyone uh in the race i learned a lot about everyone during the course of the race yeah yeah that was it was incredible like i've never seen anybody kick that hard in a yeah. mile like i think his last 800 was like 155 or something crazy like that. that is crazy and when when you seen Leo go, did you get did you get like a what were you feeling basically when you seen Leo make the move with two hundred and fifty to go? I was so happy because I I didn't think anybody would break it, and I think it would have been a little bit disappointing. Yeah. Uh, if nobody broke it, and and during the race when we hit those splits, I was like, I don't think anybody's gonna break it. But then when I saw, but then when I saw Leo with like that insane kick, I was like, maybe he'll get it, and it was like it made me so happy for him, and then. Obviously, like, when he finished the race, like, just seeing his time, I was stoked. And then he puked everywhere, and then he turned, he's like, Easton, look, it's chicken and rice. And I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, that must have been an in- in- incredible event to be, to be even just a part of, not, never mind running a 405 mile at the age of 18, just being a part of, being a part of the event as a whole, that must have been incredible. Definitely. Yeah, it was, it was way cool. And obviously, that being an incredible track achievement, uh, as we mentioned, you're ranked fifth. Well, as we know right now, you're ranked fifth for high school boys uh, for cross country. But off, off the top of your head, are any great track memories or wins that you can think of? Is there, is there any that you'd like to mention? Um, let's we'll see. I think I think we've covered them all. I mean, I've I've been fortunate to have a lot of good races and a lot of bad races, but. Um, I think those are probably the main ones. Yeah, no, that's that's like when you say the main ones, it's not like someone's main ones. They're like, oh yeah, I ran a good time around this year, fifth in America for for cross country. You're a four oh five four oh five miler, and you've been to Nike Cross three years in a row. So that's that's a bit of a and obviously a lot more to come. But for the age of nineteen, that's a, a pretty incredible running career. Thank you. And uh, on the on the topic of more to come in the future, that is most of that uh, is going to happen in college. So, what is college looking like for you? Uh, yeah. So I, I I'm getting a little bit of a slow start. I was playing uh, soccer in my brother-in-law's basement and ended up basically kicking a wall. <laughs> and so I uh, I'm just waiting for my foot to heal up on me. And then in the meantime, I'm doing some cross training. But uh, I'm getting really excited for the BYU fall cross country season, assuming it happens, and um, I I just can't wait to be a part of that team and to be with such incredible runners, and um, and then with track too. I just I'm really excited to transition to a, um, a a sport in college where everybody's just working their butt off, and it just seems like a really cool environment. Yeah, and obviously. The, the your your mates say you're on the quarantine classic with Nico and Carl Sprout and all our top athletes. But would you say maybe from your training up to this point, you maybe been the the top dog as such? So will it be a bit of a a bit of a change or something to adapt to when you get to college and you mightn't be up to top straight away and you have to do a bit extra work? Or are you looking forward to that? Um. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be a challenge. Like I'm I'm used to being one of the top guys and especially like on my team, I'm used to leading all the workouts. So it's yeah. going to be different for sure, but I'm excited to learn from Connor Mance and Casey Klinger and all the guys on the team and kind of get my butt kicked for a little while. I'm excited <laughs> for that. 
No, that will definitely, uh, would you say, make you a better athlete overall. Definitely, and it'll be it'll be humbling to learn from them and and uh, just seeing all the things they do to make themselves faster will help me to learn a lot. And from a academic side of college, what are you what are you planning on studying? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Probably something in business, but I do have almost two years of of college done already, just because I took a lot of college classes in high school. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll probably major in something business related. That that's that's insane. So you're you're not only a top athlete, you're you're an intellectual as well. So bright yeah. future there either way. And um, obviously going into college, there's maybe a bit more pressure to perform well in academic side and in a running aspect. Because in college, I know in America, everything through sport is very school based and college based. Because over in Ireland it's everything's true a club so i mm. I'll, I'll go to school and then after school i'll go to training with my club that has nothing to do with school at all but now over in america mm. it's slightly different everything's uh everything's true to school and true to college so do you think are you a bit nervous for maybe a bit more pressure going into college for maybe balancing academic side and the running side um i'm not really nervous like i, I look forward to the challenge i like being really busy and i think i'm going to be a very busy guy yeah. Uh, the only thing is I, I do like my social life, so I'm just hoping that I find time to get lots of sleep, train really hard, do well in school, and have a social life. Yeah. Um, but, but, like, I'm not the type of college kid that likes to go out and, and uh, be up till 3 a.m. every morning. Yeah. But, uh, I like to be productive and working hard, and I'm excited that I'll have that opportunity. Yeah, no, obviously um... – It'll be it'll be great, and obviously I'm not your age, but I'm the same. I'm not one to be going out really to to parties or anything, cause I feel like I just feel like if if I was to do that, then I don't have a good session or I don't have a good race. Everything will just lead back to that, and I'll just feel really disappointed. Yeah, I'm 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 the same way. I like to be social, but in a in a in a different way. That's not going to hurt my running <laughs> yeah no that's it that's exactly just a lot of other ways to be uh, very social without having to resort to alcohol and parties yeah well i mean like at byu it's not really like alcohol but they are staying out really late <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, obviously that obviously uh over in america leo mentioned it in his episode that he has to get up very early because it's really sunny so if you were staying yeah. up to to 3 a.m you'll only have maybe for three four hours sleep to then you're getting up for your run then so it won't be it wouldn't be the most efficient for your training yeah yeah totally and i i guess i'm just now realizing that since you're an island you maybe don't know but byu is a religious institute so they're like most kids on the campus don't drink and you're not supposed to drink and and i would say that most kids follow that so oh, okay. it's, it's a good environment to be around for yeah. running for sure yeah, so that's that's something new. Actually, I didn't know that. To be honest, I just thought it was the name of a college, so I didn't yeah. I didn't want to ask what BYU is, and uh, it seemed pretty stupid. But no, that's that's a that's cool to know. So it's a it's a. Would you be obviously? I don't want to talk too much on the religious side, uh, but just from to get a bit of a point of view, would you be a religious person? Yeah, I am religious. That's uh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, everybody, or I, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people that go to the school are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day yeah. Saints. Um, I think it's like 99% church members, oh. and uh, most of them actually go on a mission. I don't know if I'm planning on that at the moment, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Oh, that, that's that's really cool. That's like I didn't actually know that. That is really cool to find out. But over here in Ireland, and Dublin in particular, where the county where I live, my generation religion is kind of burning out like my religion anyway mm. catholic for like uh, the people over here in, in dublin it's it's kind of burning out a little bit like it, my mom and dad would would go to mass when it's on and everything but like people my age wouldn't wouldn't be as likely to go we'll go at christmas we go at easter now but other than that people wouldn't be intent to go to to church a lot so that is that's really cool to see a mixture over in over in america like that there's nothing like that over here in ireland where there's mm -hmm. a mixture of college religion and sport so that is really cool to find out mm. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a huge part of the institution. So I'm excited to be surrounded by people that are, are religious just because um, their their morals are similar to mine and, like, just 
I think religion encourages people to be like their best selves. Yeah. And so I feel like for the most part, everybody is trying to be kind to one another and trying to serve. And it just creates a really cool community and environment to be around. Yeah, no, that's that's so cool. And for a sport like like running, you need to be disciplined. You need to you need to run when you need to run. You need to eat what you need to eat. It's not like it, it's not like you know another sport like football or uh, or tennis or whatever. Where if you if you don't do it for a while, you can come back and you'll still have the same skill. But in running, you need to be disciplined. You need to have a schedule. You need to be consistent if you want to do well in the sport. So it, it's so cool to see different ways of discipline uh, coming in through the sport. So that's so cool. Definitely. And um, obviously, maybe coming off the topic of uh, college a little bit. Uh, we, we've mentioned uh, a few PBs along the way and your 405 uh, mile. Is there any other PBs that you'd like to share with us? Well, a, a few insane ones putting me to shame again, someone, but uh, go on, I'll let you do it. Um, so my, all of my, all of my PRs and PBs are, I'm proud of them, but it's like bittersweet because I like, I just, I was injured so much my senior year that yeah. like, I know that would be faster, but um, I ran, I ran fourteen forty one in the five k my junior year, um, on on the grass, not on the track. Yeah. And then I ran, I just barely in Utah, which is at high elevation. I ran eight fifty eight in the two mile, which at sea level would be like an eight forty four or something like Whoa, that. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Thank you. So I think I think those are kind of the major PRs. That that is it's a bit it's a bit overwhelming that like obviously the standard over in Ireland it can be very high but I feel like standard over in America is a good bit higher so for someone like me and uh, my age that's a bit overwhelming here uh, talking to someone with uh, over in America they say PRs obviously some people over in Ireland say that as well I say PBs well no personal records over there that is that is insane thank you and uh, obviously. Uh, if you want to be good in in running, you, you you have to be very versatile. You can't obviously when you get pro, you have more events that you'd you'd run uh, more often than others, uh, and it's the same with track and cross country. You need to be you need to be versatile and good at both if you want to do well in the sport. But I feel like with everyone, they have that little bit they they prefer one over the other to put it simpler. So what one would you prefer, uh, cross country or track? Um. I mean, I like them both. Like the the environment of track is really cool, um, but I would probably, and I and actually I th I think I like racing track better, but and like the weather is better in the track season. Yeah. But I think I would actually say cross country just because it's so team oriented. Yeah. And also there are um, I, I'm just better at like long distance running, so I think that's why I'd say cross country. Yeah, as good. So you're, uh, as we you know, you're a very, very versatile runner, and that that's so cool to see. And we'll, we'll talk a bit more about goals for the future, uh, uh, close to the end of the episode. But if just say you were to turn professional one day, what would be the distance you'd be like? Yeah, that is the one I'd want to. Maybe not do over every uh, every other distance, but the distance you'd focus on. Um, that's hard to say now, but. If I had to guess, I would probably say the 5K. Yeah, because uh, remind us again what your PB in the 5K is. Uh, 1441. So, yeah, especially going to college and uh, working harder and getting yourself up through the ranks, I presume that time will be coming down quite a lot. So, uh, that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what times you can drop on there. Thank you. I'm excited to see it as well. <laughs> and uh, obviously... Injuries, uh, as we've mentioned uh, numerous times uh, over the course of the episode, uh, injuries and obviously illnesses, not just for you, for every athlete out there, can play a big part in a race and training and it most certainly has for you leading up to races. Um, even though the incredible times you have, maybe some of them could be a bit faster if you didn't get sick or injured leading up to a race. and. It may be in the middle of a season where, or at the start of a season maybe, where uh, leading in from cross country to track, you're getting into track training, up in the mileage, getting ready for races, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're injured or you're sick. So do you have any tips really for anyone how to stay mentally and physically strong over an in illness or um, injury period? 
Um, yeah, I think that's huge. Like every everybody has to struggle with that at one point if you're going to be a runner. And I would just say that th- at that point, like don't let running define you. Like recognize that there's lots of things in your life that make you like a valuable person and work on those things. And also with running, like cross training can be really fun if you allow it to be like there's people that just do cross training as their sport. Like yeah. and that's something I've tried to remember. Like there's swimmers out there, there's bikers out there. And I just kind of try to treat myself like I'm I'm I, I'm a dual athlete, and at that point I'm working on cross country or or I'm working on biking or swimming, and that helps me a little bit more to like be motivated. Um, yeah. And then another piece of advice is usually a, a rule of thumb for cross training is to do double the time that you would do for running, and um, that's something that's that's a hard thing to commit to if you're injured for a really long time. Yeah, but it's something that I think you should strive for. So if you're supposed to run for an hour, then you should probably bike for two hours or water run yeah. for two hours. But anyways, that's the, probably the biggest thing that I would say. And uh, obviously, uh, cross training comes as a very physically uh, a very physical part of staying fit as much as you can over injury. But seeing your teammates out getting fit and stronger each session can probably not probably but i'd say does have a mental effect on you so uh, has that ever happened to you uh, mentally over a course of an illness or injury um or even if it hasn't would there be any bits of advice that you could give to anyone how to stay uh, mentally strong um yeah like I, th- I think it absolutely has an effect just seeing your teammates get better and and my teammates were all of a sudden like better runners than me and i was yeah. like what, what is this? <laughs> but uh, i think like what i tried to realize is that we are both on the same team and like I'm cheering for them just as much as they're cheering for me. Yeah. And so I just tried to be happy for the accomplishments that they were having and recognize that I was on my own journey and they'd be cheering me on as well. But I think that running is about working on your own personal commitment to the sport and you shouldn't worry too much about what's going on around Definitely. you so long as you're putting out the very best effort that you have. Like it's really cool to achieve in running, but what's way more um, rewarding in my mind is the process of, of working your butt off. Yeah. Butt off. So I think that's like the main focus that has helped me. And just like, like obviously being with your teammates can, even if they're training and you're not, just being at the training sessions and just being with them can, uh, and like with family and friends, like just being with people that you love can really give you a, a boost to stay mentally strong and motivated. Obviously seeing your teammates training and getting better can also give you a motivation boost to try, obviously not rush the process of getting back into training, but try your best to keep as fit as you can. Totally, for sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, you have definitely a lot of experience in the that aspect. So I'll I'll leave your your Instagram down in the description. Maybe you've thirteen thousand followers over on Instagram, so it might make much of a difference. But anyone listening, if uh, hopefully this isn't putting too much pressure on you, but if you have any questions about injuries or illnesses over course training, if they can just shoot you a text to, and maybe you can help them out as much as you can. Definitely. Yeah. Sure. So, um. Moving off maybe to more uh, sad aspects of of running, there's um there's you document your your running career quite a lot, and you have a big fan base over many platforms. You have uh, you've you've Instagram, which I mentioned, you have over thirteen thousand followers. You have your podcast, which we mentioned at the start of the episode, and obviously your YouTube. But the two I want to focus on are your your podcast and your YouTube because I think they're they're the most relatable for me anyway, and I'm sure a lot of people listening. So I'm kind of going to be asking the same questions for the both of them. When did you start? Why did you start? And uh, how how have things changed over the course of the two the two experience? So starting with YouTube, obviously your your main platform. How and why did you start? YouTube um so I started with YouTube when I was I want to say I want to say 16 so it was like three years ago and I started it because I was ready for just like a new project I wanted to see if I could get good at video and I wanted to see if I could continue to inspire people in a way that was um like a super commonly used platform and and podcasts have grown as a platform but definitely youtube is is definitely like still the bigger one and so i wanted it to be like relatable and entertaining and still inspiring and so that's like when i started it and and that's kind of the reasoning i just feel like 
I have a journey that is relatable to people and I feel like I have a message to share with people and I can help people. And, um, that's, that's the main reason why I wanted to do a channel. Yeah, definitely. And nonetheless, your videos are very entertaining. I'm not uh, soaking up to anyone here, but I watch them uh, as much as possible. And no, they definitely are. And they, they, I want to talk about uh, a little bit about the editing side of it, coming off running just a little bit. What, what basically, what's the story with you and your editing, like the software you use? Um, have you learned a lot over the years of doing YouTube about editing? So just a, a brief Oh, like, and, or any tips for anyone? Like, obviously, this will help me out a lot as well. So, just uh, anything about editing that you could share would be would be amazing. Yeah, so I use a program called Final Cut Pro, and um, I learned a lot of my YouTube editing stuff and and just like video stuff from my brother in law, who's a professional videographer. Yeah. But there's all sorts of like YouTube tutorials on how to do that kind of thing. Yeah, if it's like look for them, but. Um, I like Peter McKinnon a lot, so I watch some of his stuff. He doesn't use Final Cut Pro, but um, I just usually try to find other like YouTubers that make yeah, videos, cool. making videos, yeah. and I, I follow them. But I think that I have gotten a lot better at uh, editing, and mostly that has come from interning with my brother-in-law. Um, I, I find that I, I do get better, but like when I learn the most is when I'm like actually going and like researching it, which is yeah. usually like making videos with my brother-in-law. Yeah, that's, that's uh, really cool. Obviously editing can make or break your, your channel taking off as such. And on the topic of uh, channels taking off, when did your channel really start uh, taking off and you start to seeing the subscribers build up and up and up? Um, you know, like a lot of channels have like a big video that just kind of goes viral and gets them tons of subscribers. Yeah. Like I would say that's actually probably how most channels are, but mine is just for some reason just grown super steadily. Like I've never had like any like massive jumps. Yeah. Like every big race that I do, I'll get like a decent amount of new subscribers or, um, like whenever I do like a YouTube collaboration with somebody, I'll get more subscribers or one of my videos as well. But I think for the most part, it's actually just been like a pretty steady increase since I started. Yeah, and obviously we mentioned that you you don't you don't base your training or uh, becoming a better athlete off your YouTube channel, uh, like not adding pressure to yourself. But would you say maybe how good you are at running also gave you that little bit of a edge uh, in the YouTube uh, world, basically? Because when you think about it realistically, like I know it's maybe a little bit bad to say but if you want to be realistic about things people that maybe aren't as talented as you we could say uh wouldn't maybe take off as much as you have that, yeah that's no i think that's definitely true like i think that um me being good at running has made me applicable on youtube and yeah. a lot of people like start youtube channels like thinking that they're going to go viral but the problem about like youtube is it's not it's not luck. Like you have to have a reason why your channel should get views exactly. rather than somebody else's. So if you're just doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, like it's, it's not going to do, it's not going to do super well. So, um, I think for me, it was just, it was just something that made my channel unique and it made it interesting to people. Yeah. But I do think that if somebody like wanted to start a YouTube channel and they worked harder at it than I would, like, like that, like that's just how it is. Like they would have to work harder at their like, video editing skills and it, the videos would have to be more interesting than mine from like a cinematography perspective yeah. or like a comedy perspective or it's just something that was outside of running like they couldn't like I'm more valid when I give running advice because I, I have run well yeah and so I think in that particular topic it has helped a lot to have that yeah no definitely and uh, within a video you have to have confidence and one thing that i struggled with at the start of my podcast was sharing it around because the thing with uh, people my age in dublin is they can be very judgmental i'll put it that way and i found over in america obviously people are judgmental now but they're they're more vlogging and uh, documenting like your life over a course of the day is is more frowned upon really over here in dublin than over in america so i found it a bit challenging sharing uh, my my podcast and my channel like on my snapchat and on my instagram and uh, did you did you struggle with that at all or were you like you don't care what people think and you're just sharing it uh, no, like, I think like that's a very like real hard thing. Like when I started my podcast, it was like, 
it was not mainstream at all. Yeah. And so it was it was something that I was really nervous about getting judged for. And I think that I was really like I was really excited and surprised to hear that people were pretty accepting of it. Like yeah. when I put out the podcast, I like debated so much about it. I was like, oh, like is this gonna make me like a weird kid? Yeah, that's and, like, me exactly. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, I was like I was like, if I am doing something that is like cool for me, like if I'm working hard at something and like there's something that I'm passionate about that I'm working on, like why would people care? Like it's exactly. not like it's it's not as weird as as you think it is by looking at your like looking at yourself and looking at the podcast. Yeah. Like it's it's cool that you're working on something that's like unique and different and and I think like one thing that legitimized um my podcast was I was like I tell my buddies like on the basketball team that I was like, yo, like I just interviewed Jim Fredette or like you probably wouldn't know who that is, but yeah, he's a big basketball player. We're like, oh, I just interviewed like this Olympian, and then they'd be like, oh, like what? Like that's kind of sick actually. And so I think that I think that as long as you are confident in what you're doing and you're like you're excited about working hard at something, then yeah. um, I think that for the most part, people will probably respect you, and even if they give you grief for it, they they're probably internally like, well, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, no, uh, that's it exactly. And uh, you, it, what you just said there was really relatable when you said to your basketball teammates, say you were you were interviewing Olympians and all. When when I found out that you were actually coming onto the podcast, I went into my Snapchat group channel. I was telling my mates there, uh, my of my running team that you were you were coming on the podcast, and they were like, "No way, that is so cool!" Like you, like they they obviously watch running on YouTube. And you being one of the big names in the running world on YouTube, and not even on YouTube, obviously just in the running world in general, they were like, "That is, that is insane." And at the end of the day, nobody really cares. I mentioned this in an episode of my podcast that people obviously want you to do well, your friends and family, but people that maybe are saying sly remarks or uh, maybe judging your podcast or your YouTube channel a little bit, at the end of the day, it doesn't affect them at all and they don't really care. Like, if you mm-hmm. see someone walking down the street and you think they might look it maybe a bit funnier, like, different than other people, you might notice it, turn away, and you'll forget about it then literally an hour later. And at the end of the day, it's like that with pretty much everything. Nobody really cares at the end of the day. Not in a not in a bad way or in a selfish way, but th- like it doesn't really affect their life. That's uh, that's actually such a good point. That's that, how how old are you? Sixteen. That's crazy. Like that's crazy. Like how cool of a perspective you have at sixteen. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. But there's something in like psychology called like the spotlight effect. Like where it's like if you have a zit, like. You can feel it, and it's like the one thing that you're thinking about all day, and you yeah. think that everyone's noticing, like disgusting, it's disgusting, and like they like think differently of you, and just like think you're a weird kid, and it's like, well, like okay, maybe you have a zip, but it's like not that big of a deal. Like exactly. no one really cares. Like they might notice it, but it's not like they're thinking about it all day, like you yeah. are. And it's like that's kind of how it is with running, and even like another like twist on that perspective is that with like how, like you being nervous about how fast you're running and stuff, it's like people look forward to cheering you on and people will get excited with you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like if you don't run fast, people don't really care. Like your friends exactly. don't really care. Like they, they're not friends with you because you have fast times. Like that might like mm. make them have respect for you a little bit, yeah. but like, but like they wouldn't see you any differently if you didn't have fast times or whatever. And like, and like, that's what I had to realize when I got injured is like people liked cheering for me like it was a bonding experience to have yeah. people cheering for me and like get excited for me but that's literally the only reason why they care about the times i run like there's nothing more to it no it, it, that's it exactly and it obviously being injured is obviously a really bad thing but as you just said your mates aren't mates you because of how you, well you do in running or any sport and also being injured can also a positive that can come out of it is if someone stops talking to you or loses respect for you if you're not running or running as well as you used to be, then it's probably better at the end of the day that they did lose that respect for you and you don't you don't have to deal with them and they're, that like negative energy is out of your life, you know? Totally, totally, I agree. So, so yeah, so for anyone out there that is maybe wanting to start up a, a YouTube channel, and the thing is, people might be thinking, yeah, you guys started up YouTube channels and podcasts and that's sport and that's something that people like, 
people are like really into sport sport is such a big thing and there's people out there that want to start maybe gaming and maybe gaming uh, as a occupation might be a little bit more frowned upon and that might uh that might bring them down a uh, confidence level to actually share their channel but not like nobody actually cares so just do it mm-hmm yeah no i i i totally agree just just do whatever you want to do follow nike's slogan just do it that's it and um no obviously we're we're talking about your channel there and taking off as well and uh, obviously just from this conversation you you see and from watching youtube videos you you're, you're very confident in speaking and all as well so did that definitely played a part in you starting up your your podcast so same really with the youtube why why uh did you start the podcast um, yeah, so I started the podcast because I wanted to learn. Like, I did homeschool for a little bit when I was in middle school, and I had a little bit of extra time, and I was like, okay, like, how can I become my very best self with this extra time that I have? Yeah. And and I believe in mentors. I believe in, like, learning from other people, and I was like, how can I learn from all of these incredible people that I have around me and that I know, and, like, like what makes successful people different? Like why are they successful? Like that yeah, was my definitely. biggest question. And I wanted that answered. And so I started the podcast so that A, I could meet cool new people and I could learn that and that I could have a big or like a like a cool new project. And then B, I wanted to share it. Like I wanted to help other people be inspired from the things that I was learning. Yeah, no, that's that that's really cool. And it's, I can relate to that a lot because uh, I started the, this podcast over the course of the pandemic. So obviously I had a lot of spare time. So that's, that is why I decided to start it. And even having uh, big names like you and Leo on, I've learned so much about running and how to, not how to get better, but how, what it takes really to, to get to the level you're at. And even people that I've had on that I race against, like just little things that you pick up on, you learn, even without even thinking about it, you learn so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. The people around you, like Jim Rose quoted, like you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Like that's so true. Yeah. And that's a good reason I like podcasting is like I'm, I want to spend more time with people that are – um, like really cool and I want to be more like them yeah no that's it, exactly and it, it gives uh, me opportunities like this to talk to such a, a big name in the run world like you so it's brought me even though I've only started a few months it's brought me uh, many different opportunities I've had a sponsor I've been able to talk to you and and Leo so it's been it's been pretty incredible so far and uh, yeah and like with you and your your YouTube and your podcast it's only the beginning really definitely um, hey, I've got to go in a couple of minutes. Do you have any, uh, like, big last questions for me before I head uh, out? No, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe just goals goals for the future. If you just want to give a cool. quick uh, over overview of what you're looking forward to for the future, obviously college and uh, the big goal, obviously becoming professional, if that's what, if that is a goal for you. So, yeah, just really quickly goals for the future. Uh, definitely, yeah. So, um, I think with with all goals, they have to come with a like grain of salt, knowing that things may not go your way. And exactly. if if if, uh, if a global pandemic comes and throws them off, you have to be able to adjust. <laughs> but um, for me, right now, I would love to be one of the top five guys in the on the BYU cross country team, who who probably is uh, one of the top two teams in the country this year. Yeah. And um, long term, I would love to be in the Olympics one day. I'd love to run professionally one day. Of course. And, um, those are those are dreams they have, and I'll just keep working at them until some says I can't anymore. But um, <laughs> the other the other goal I'd probably say that I have is to I, I want to just keep growing the YouTube channel. Like I don't want to put a specific, specific number on it, but I would like to just I would like to gain a following where I can really be like making a difference in the world. So. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Now, that, that is so cool. Obviously, every runner, well, most runners out there, main goal is coming to the Olympics. And someone of your talent at your age definitely is a, a goal to shoot for. So, uh, definitely, everyone subscribe to, to Easton Alred's YouTube channel. It's an insane one to follow along on his YouTube journey. I'll leave a link to it down down in the description and the podcast cards. Definitely go over and subscribe. Hopefully, this helps out your channel. Even one subscriber, that would be, that would be a, a success. Uh, mission for me anyway but no thanks so much Ethan for coming on this is a uh, like with Leo I'm kind of fanboying here a little bit uh, with someone of uh, of your 
basically persona on the on the podcast. It's it's really cool. Well, thank you. Hey, if any of you guys watch and subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment that um, comment that the Little Running Irishman podcast sent you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely do that. Go if you're watching any of Easton's videos from this podcast. Say the Little Running Irishman sent you, and no, that would be that would be really cool. Make sure to keep me updated on that if anyone does comment. So uh, yeah, no. Sweet, please. I will. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks for coming on. Uh, it was it was incredible having you on, and um, hope everyone at home enjoyed listening or watching this episode. If you did, like, subscribe. As I said, Easton's all Easton's uh, socials are down in the description. Thanks for coming on, Easton. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. Yeah, see you all next time. Bye.